This is Scott the fix a guide Today we have a Whirlpool electric dryer that isn't heating. So already confirmed that we have 220 volts coming in and the breakers had not tripped. So my suspicion is it may be the element. So I'm removing all of these quarter inch screws from the back panel. Got it unplugged. I got the vent tube taken off and now I'm just going to lift the back panel off and that's going to give me really easy access to the element. Taking off the electrical connections, bringing power to the element. And we call this a canister element. It comes out really easily. Two quarter inch screws on the sides. We're gonna pull that element off the old one. Sometimes you'll find that the spring is broken, that it's fallen apart, and the electrons can't flow through and heat it anymore. In our case, this one was uh, touching the metal and causing a short circuit, so the breaker kept tripping. So the spring was a little bit bent, and when it would heat up, it would expand out and ground out, causing a short circuit. So we're going to replace it. We're taking off this high limit. We're going to just pry off the spade connector and the high limit comes right off. We're gonna put that same high limit back on the new one. There's a little prong there. You're gonna put that prong through that hole on the high limit. And then the other side is the spade connector that just slips over the terminal. Really easy. So that's on tight. And now we can go ahead and put the canister element in position, we're going to slide it on in there. It's going on the inside. There we go. We're going to put in those two quarter inch screws on the side. So it's held in securely. And here's um, the element on Amazon that shows the part number. And these are pretty cheap. You could probably get it shipped to you for about 25 bucks. There are other things certainly that can cause the heater not to go on. One of the breakers may have tripped. Could also be one of the high limits or the thermal fuse. So we're gonna show you how to check those too. So we're putting this um, power connectors back on. And if you want to check these, you can set your multimeter for a continuity check. This actually also has a uh, auditory signal. You can hear it. So you'll, we'll see on the meter if there's a change. So that's showing that there is continuity. So that's showing that, that the element is intact. It's working. It doesn't have a break showing that the high limit is working. Then there's a high limit higher up on the stack. We're gonna just put it on the two metal probes and that one's working, has continuity. There's this little thermal fuse here. That one has continuity. And then there's the thermostat out, outer parts has continuity. So those are all working fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the back panel back on. If you're doing a continuity check between the terminals on the element and you put one on the element terminal and then one on the case of the element, if you get a reading showing continuity, that means it's grounded out and you want to replace the element. That's what was wrong with ours. So again, you just put probe on the terminal, bring power for the element and then put the other probe on the case. And then if you get a reading showing continuity, that means you have a short circuit. The spring is touching the metal. So now we got the panel on, we're gonna put the vent tube back on and we are done. And you're gonna have a heater that's gonna work for you again for a long time. So hope that's been helpful to you and you get your dryer going. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.